What's up, get kidders, man? How's life, man? You feel a little bit freer? You feeling like your old self again? You going outside and enjoying the sunset again? You know what I mean? I hope so, man. You know, you get that feeling in your heart again, man. I'm starting to feel that feeling, man. You know, I'm just getting contagious, man. And this one's not going to put us in the hospital, man. It's the feeling of life, man. I'm feeling like the Grinch on Christmas Day. I got some tightness in my chest, man. There's some shit growing in there, man. You know what I'm saying? That's a good thing, man. Let's keep that going. You know, speaking of that, man, let's start thinking about Christmas instead of the corona, man. Let's focus on something more positive, man. Let's keep Christmas alive 24 hours a day, man. 365 days a week, 366 days on leap years, man. You know what I mean? Christmas instead of corona, man. Keep it alive every day, man. You know what I'm saying? Get that feeling going in your heart again. So, you know, I generally have, like, somebody call me, like a friend or something like that, asking for help. I mean, I'm totally like, eh, I'm busy. You know what I mean? I don't really want to do that. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So I'll straight up sometimes just savagely say, oh, I don't really do that. You know, I don't want to do that. I'm an asshole. What can I say, man? You know what I mean? But I got that tightness going on, man. I'm feeling it. You know, so I had two near and dear friends call me up and say, hey, man, you know, I got some things going around. Some things are popping again, man. I'm taking off the mask, man. I'm getting back into life. You know what I mean? I need these guitars tricked out. And for some reason, both these people were near and dear to me, and they had the same fucking guitar, man. So this is the tale of two telecasters, man. These both started off as like an early 2000 Squire telecasters. Both these guitars, man. And they had totally different journeys, you know what I mean, for totally different legendary cats, man. And the first one is right behind me, man. It's right here on the on the operation table, man. Can you see that? Can you see that? Let me see. Can you see it now? Is it coming into focus, man? You see it, man? Let, let, let's flip you around, man, and you can take a diagnosis and tell you about what's going on, people. Peace. What's up, people? So I had a visit yesterday from the great Johnny Rock. And he played a couple of my guitars, man. And he was playing my uh, the telecaster that I filmed a little while back that I showed you guys. You see that book? Can you guess what's going to happen? He's got the book out again, folks. Oh, shit. What's happening here? Anyway, so Johnny Rock... For the past couple of years, I know Johnny Rock, right? He's Johnny Rock's a friend of mine, right? I admired Johnny Rock's guitar playing for, for many years. And he keeps talking about He said he had this squire he wanted me to trick out, man. He's like, I want you to trick out the squire for me, man. Trick out a squire for Johnny Rock? Absolutely. And this is like seven years ago. <laughs> and I never saw it, man. You know, so he was playing my... You know what I'm saying? The other day, he's right there in that chair, man. Johnny Rock. I like having Hendrix over here, bro. And, uh, you know, I've, I've worked on some of his guitars in the past. You know, but i never even seen this guitar. So he's like, well, I'll give it to you. You know, come by, come by my place. So I came by later that night. You know what I mean? And uh, let's see what it is, man. He said it was a telly, a telecaster, a telvin caster. This. this is a real unzippering, folks. Ooh, look at this. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's pretty nice, man. I don't know why Rock hasn't busted this out, man. I've known the guy for many years. He's never even, I've never even seen him play this guitar. Dirty, you know, yeah, that's dirty. I don't even know if I want to trick this out. This is a beautiful guitar, man. He told me, and I think that Doug Fresh actually said that he put this Seymour Duncan in for him. I don't know if that's true or not. I think that was something he had said. Talking about the legendary squire. But I, I didn't really know it was such a beautiful butterscotch. Must be 1.5, yeah. This is all cracked. Johnny Rock wants to mark this guy up. You know Johnny Rock. Oh, here we go. There it is. <laughs> Johnny Rock, 2014. Yeah, there you go. It's right around the time you started talking about having it. You know what I mean? You know it's Johnny Rock's guitar. Smells like Johnny Rock. It's got a Johnny Rock mark on it, man. Cool, man. So we're not going to mess with this mark, of course. But well, let's trick this guy out. Let's take it apart, man. These strings are actually not too bad. I might just boil these strings. And use these strings. 
He said carte blanche, Bobby G. Fix it up for me. So let's do it. Let's do it. Let's take it apart. Shall we? We played it for a day or so. You know, just admiring, you know what I mean, the guitar. And I just want to make some observations and the direction I want to take and tricking it out. Because every trick has got to have sort of a direction. So the way I see this guitar. Um, what I want to do, I want to... Uh, Give a little little tiny flavor of gold and i want to these knobs gotta go these knobs are horrible i'm gonna keep the switch i'm gonna try to since our our great friend dougie most likely did the electronics on this you know what I mean? i'm gonna try to keep them you know what i mean almost as intact as i can i'm gonna get i'm gonna i'm gonna get some gold i'm gonna look for some gold you know what i mean because they had the gold ones in the 50s, you know what I mean? Like that brass ones. I'm going to get some gold um, saddles. And put some gold screws in, right? Keep the chrome here. This has the worst. You can cut your finger right off. This is so jagged, man. I can't believe this left the factory like that. That's a fucking shame, man. I No wonder the motherfucker don't want to get it out of his closet, man. This guitar, it cut my fingers, man. It's literally, literally dead, man. You know what I'm saying? That's why I don't want to play it. The round over doesn't exist. It's horrible, man. Horrible. It's so jagged, man. I want to get some nice gold tuning buttons. Nice goldy chrome, man. We're going to sand this guy off. Uh, keep the tuners, though. You know what I mean? I see Johnny Rock already had his marks over here, so I want to kind of leave his little chicken scratcher. You know what I mean? Get rid of this squire. We don't want to talk about squire no more, man. Squire's in our hearts. This ain't going to be a squire. So, now I'm going to dissect it. I'm going to take it apart. You know what I mean? This is going to a good, uh... I actually had like a... Like a nice chrome one. I think it was like... I'm done for a Rickenbacker. Like a John Lennon Rickenbacker. I want to put that on here. They're probably around the same size. That's all cracked. This is gonna be a trip, man. I can't wait to get this guy. Let's get, let's let's totally dissect it and get it and get it processed, man. All right, so we got it apart. Um, this I'm just gonna clean up the body. Uh, I took the knobs off because they were just I hated them. I got these wonderful knobs here. They're set screw. They're dome knobs. This is just saying dome knob to me, just because of the butterscotch. Those cheesy generic flat knobs are just bothering me. So I'm gonna put them on there. Um. What else do I, I got this chrome piece I found in the archive. Should fit that footprint right there. You know what I mean? This is all cracked anyway. Yeah, I was saying it's broken already. So you get something nice in there. So I also got a nice bone, old stock bone nut. That's actually old stock. This cheesy plastic thing that comes in here. You know what I mean? So I'm going to strip all this off the hardware. I'm going to sand this down flat. I'm going to give it a good round over, flatten that neck out. Um, as far as the body goes, I mean, I want to keep, uh, you know what I mean? I want to keep the integrity of Dougie's work if Dougie did indeed work on his pickup, as I recall. I think I remember Johnny Rock even calling me, like upset about it. Like, oh, I think you switched out some components on me. Anyway, man, this has obviously got some history. A dear friend of ours has passed away, possibly. You know what I mean? So I want to kind of leave that electronics as is. I'm going to snap those new knobs on. I'm going to clean this up with, you know what I mean, with some, some uh, cleaner wax. You know what I mean? Just get it nice and shiny again. You know what I mean? Pretty much, it's it's got the telly thing going. So, I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to you know what I mean? That's not really my, my uh, focus. But the focus is going to be on getting this neck up to speed, man. Because really... You know what I mean? It, it's it's garbage. You know what I mean? It, it's not in good condition. I'm going to... Um, I always saw that John Lennon had this awesome telecaster in the 70s, man. And he had these Grover tuning keys. These big-ass Grover, those, you know, Ace of Spades looking t tuning keys on on his telecaster. And it's always so fucking balls, man. And I was thinking... I'm going to put some gold saddles on here and find some Grover ones. See if I can get ones that fit. Big gold ones, right? 
It keeps it keep this chrome. Just the, the tuning keys, man. That'd be boss, man. And I'm gonna pull this piece of crap plastic plat nut out of here. Put that old old stock 70s. It might be from the 60s. That's real old, man. That's from that luthier lot, man. The remnants of the luthier lot. It's bone, man. Nice bone nut in there. Sounds so much better. So let's get this all, all the hardware here and let's let's sand this crap off of here. Peace. Alright, so we got that headstock sanded off. Now you want to sand it real good. So there's no sign of that squire anywhere. You know what I mean? Use a little hand sander. You know what I mean? You can get it at Swap Me for like five bucks on electric hand sander. Make sure it's all gone though, you know what I mean? Um on the back, the serial number. It's basically just printed on, really honestly. So I just took a little bit of nail polish remover, maximum strength, you know, and I mean? acetone. Just tch -tch -tch -tch, and it was gone. You know what I mean? Totally gone. You know what I mean? Adios, amigos. And so the finish is still completely intact from the, you know what I mean, the fender finish from the factory. And the fender, you know, your numbers, you know what I mean, the serial number, you know what I mean, you see over here, I mean, it still match up. You know what I'm saying? If there's ever any question as to, you know, what, you know, you know what I'm saying? Who cares? I mean, that was just distracting from the uh, the ambiance of the replica. So, this is a fantasy piece. Um, being said, I, I looked at this nut here because I wanted to put that bone nut in there. And that nut is not coming out, man. It's just the way it's in there. I don't know if you can get it in there. It's like, I was trying to see if I get a little screwdriver. But it's, it's so glued in there with like a crazy glue. And I mean, it'll break. It'll break. And it'll break the wood. It's not a bad nut. You know what I mean? It's ugly. I'd rather have that bone nut in there, but it, I, I bet you it's not going to sound bad. You know what I mean? If it didn't risk, because look how it's so, you know what I mean? It's one one piece with the thing. It's not like, you know what I mean? Just there. It's glued, like, seriously with that. You know what I mean? Crazy glue based glue. So, we'll leave it there. You know what I mean? <laughs> Lack of any other real, you know what I mean? Plausibility on this need. Um... So that's that. So we're going to uh, do the round over. Ah, I scratched myself. Ah, I scratched myself. And we're going to straighten this neck out, clean it up. You know, perfunctory. Not really a, a great cleaning. And mask it off. And we're going to just poly this guy up. Do a tradition. And I think water slides. So we'll come back when we're all taped off. And we have like two or three coats on. And we're about to do the water slide. Wrapping it up just like a poor man's Christmas present. What you want to do is put a piece of masking tape right here. You know what I mean? Nice and sturdy so you don't want any leakage. You know what I mean? You see any bubbles, man? Get those bubbles out. You see what I'm saying, too, right? Remember, the tuner's going over that, too, so you're not going to see me. But you know what I mean? This is doing a special, special job. All right, folks, I'm going to finish wrapping this. Peace. What do you know, folks? We're all taped up. Be real good to get all that, you know, we don't want to get any poly on anything, peoples. I got that poly all-in-one job, the Minwax thing. I think I'm going to try to darken this up with one coat of that. And then uh, we'll just go clear and then put the uh, decal on. So let me put it on pause and give it a couple coats. I'll come right back to you. So this is what I put on there. There's Minwax Puritan Pan. Penetrate stains and sills. So basically, we just darkened it up. You know what I mean? Because we had to sand through all the, we had to sand through all the patina really to get that logo off of there. So we're gonna let this dry as per the instruction. I haven't read the instruction yet, but we're gonna let it dry, and then we're gonna coat it. You know what I mean? With one, two, uh, you know, three coats of urethane, and then we're gonna do the water slide. So see you when we get the urethanes on there. Peace. People, so we waited the eight recommended hours from that uh, stain. And now we've put on a nice, thick, healthy coat of some uh, semi-clear. Fast drying. We want some fast drying poly on this guy. Right? And you can see that this stuff actually it's got a nice, you know what I mean, yellow yellow color to it so it's gonna balance it out that stain and it's gonna exactly match that patina look I've been doing this a long time I'm telling you it's gonna do it it's gonna look great and we'll put another coat of this guy on there you can put your coats of this on every two hours this dries pretty quick 
and then we'll get the water slide on there so let's come back meet up again once we're about to put that water slide on there Got two coats on there and we have wet sanded it to like 3,000 uh, it's still wet so you don't want to really put your fingerprints in it I got a uh, envelope uh, water slide decals a lot of times you get like fantasy decals since this is a fantasy guitar like decals that never really exist they don't want really, really bad decals in themselves. I found this one. do not look bad, you know what I mean? Uh, get rid of those patent numbers because you know, I don't think that really applies to this. <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's a pretty cool thing. So I'm going to put that on right now. I'm going to put you on pause. I'll be right back at you. So there we go, people. It came out pretty good, right? Not bad. You know, it's like a, like a light understated decal. You know, and it's going to look just great. Like worn out and faded out. So let's, you know, more slide decals to say, you know, let it go 24 hours, you know what I mean? But I'm not going to go 24 hours, nice overnight, nice 8, 10 hours, you know what I mean? Let it really sit in with that, you know, early coats of urethane as they're, as they're sort of curing out. And tomorrow we'll just hit it up every two hours, that urethane, until you can't see nothing. It's already, you know, barely able to see, like, the lines or any shine on that, you know what I mean? It's already looking pretty dopacetic, copacetic. Yeah. All right, so we put down like three, four coats. You know what I mean? We wet sanded it up to like 3,000, and then we just put on another real thick coat. We're going to just keep doing this all day, and then we're going to wait, you know, till tomorrow morning, and we're going to, you know, wet sand it again, you know, uh, take off the tape maybe if it's dry enough, and then we're going to give it some true oil. So I'm going to bring you back tomorrow morning, after we've sort of examined it and we'll take it from there be real careful though with the poly you might want to put it on thick but these decals can be swimmers they can go upward if it gets real hot you know what i mean real wet you know what i mean it'll you know what i mean decure you know what i mean whatever coats are on top of it and it's like float up to the surface because they are sort of like porous so just beware of that peace all right folks so here we are it's the next day Got it all sanded, wet sanded, um, steel wool, it's nice and you know, nice, you know what I mean, semi-gloss to it. You can't see any trace of that water slide decal. Looks like it's all one piece, which is what we want. Um, now generally, in the old days, when I was a young buck, I would have just taken this tape off, sanded off the side, and put the tuners on after, you know, this is totally dried up, and, you know, called it a day. But then a couple months later, I'd see that possibly this was chipping away when I you know banged it into something or whatever because poly tends to do that when you have it taped up like this so I'm gonna take all this tape off right clean up this the you know what I mean the edges here I'm gonna hit it up with some true Earl so let's get that tape off and I'll show you what I'm talking about so you see how I've taken the the tape off here and I haven't really seen it anything yet you see how there's like sort of like an obvious mark of where you know what I mean the tape met the thing so this is like one layer here and this side here is like another layer so you know this tends to separate over time you know what I mean and you can peel off so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna you know what I mean sand around these edges here and when you add true oil to other oils it gets real hard a lot, a lot quicker and it allows whatever other finishes you know oil based sort of finishes that are applied underneath it to sort of cure faster and harder that's a proven fact folks so i'm gonna you know clean up these edges give it a little dab and come right back at you okay so we've applied the true oil with the true oil you'd want to do that with a piece of cloth a little piece of cloth you want to be very very light very sparing you know what i mean see it's already like it'll dry real quick too it'll dry within like three or four minutes it'll start to you know what i mean like if you go over it again you'll feel the stickiness so it's already you know starting to cure you're going to want to get the sides you know what i mean also so you sort of you know what i mean bring it all that you know bring it all into one piece you know what i'm saying reunite the piece as you see you know what i mean now there is you know what i mean it looks like you know what i'm saying it was a factory deal or it'll look a lot better anyway once we get this all cleaned up so let's wait for that to cure out and get the rest of the uh, tape off of it and start to uh, getting everything else prepared been you know a little bit over about two weeks let's just say it's dried up nice and hard we um 
took the steel wool to this and we got the shine off of it it looks great it feels great it's nice and smooth just fantastic so tune uh, uh tuning keys what are we going to do with those tuning buttons i was talking about some stuff before now uh, john lennon had this awesome telecaster in the 70s and i always loved it you know what i mean also another maple neck and he had uh these like gold grover tuning buttons on it man those big butter bean you know tuner buttons with a nice fat you know what i mean look at it had those, those big fat washers on the thing it looks like it what's that probably uh i don't know it's got a strange sort of i have no idea what year that is but it's obviously a john lennon guitar you know what i mean pick up change you know what i mean it looks like gibson there's a gibson hum humbucker in there yeah he's got a regular gibson humbucker in there you know what I mean? The iconic guitar. This, of course, the you know guitar that John Lennon played. In, you know what I mean? The last concert he ever did with the, you know, with Elton John in Madison Square Garden. Here's a picture of that. You know, there's old Johnny Johnny Lennon with Elton John on the keyboard. So it's an iconic instrument. I always loved that guitar as a Beatles fan. So I always wanted to do that. So I got a set of uh, gold Grover butter bean buttons here. They came in from our friends in China. And I was able to, here's the regular tuning, I was able to actually get them on there. They look good. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, switch out all these buttons. Get those gold ones on. Looks great. Turn fine. Nice and sturdy. So a cool little tribute. And I also noticed that there are kind of fat, you know what I mean, fatter anyway. You know what I mean, washers with this one. Anyway, I'm not going to put those big John Lennon ones on, but it's going to look great, folks. So let's get to... Let's get this guy, you know, unwrapped and let's get these assembled and, and put on there. It's, it's, you know, been over, you know what I mean, about two weeks. So, I mean, it, it's definitely, you know what I mean, dry enough to get those things on there without it cracking. So, I'll see you in a minute. See lemon squeezies. Look at that. Just like John Lennon's, man. It looks great. <laughs> I'm kind of jealous, man. I might have to, you know, like change my number and just move. <laughs> so Johnny Rock can't find me. This is turning out to be a beautiful guitar. Just kidding, Johnny. Um, so yeah, that's that's done. That's out of the way. So uh, let's go back to the body here. Um, we got this in. Looks good. It was kind of like like not the exact right curve, but you know what I mean. It's better than what it was. You know what I'm saying. So I got a call from Johnny Rock just last night, and he's like, "Hey man, what happened to that guitar, man?" I said, Johnny, I'm waiting for those parts. And this morning, in the mail, the last part came. So I got gold saddles. You know what I mean? A little accent of gold. Sort of like a 50s tribute. You know how the 50s had the, had the, you know what I mean, brass saddles. So I got some brassers. You know what I mean? Just to give it that 50s kind of look. and it's, But still have that, you know I mean, modern... You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, ability to set the intonation for whichever string. And I did talk to Johnny last night, and he did confirm that Dougie did all the electronic work on this. He said, you did a half-ass job. Fix it up for me. I was like, it wasn't that bad, man. We all love Dougie. So, I'm going to uh, get these guys on here. I'm going to keep these same strings. These strings are, are like, brand new. And I'm just going to put these through here. That way, I don't have to. You know what I'm saying? And... Uh, you know what I mean? Let's uh, let's get these these knobs on. Let's clean this guy up and you know, give him some wax and uh, start getting the finishing touches on here so Johnny can tickle his telly. Helpful Horus here with some helpful Horus tips. Now as we're about to put those saddles on, um, just a couple things. I mean, just to bear in mind, if you ever do guitars, if you're not going to ditch the strings and you're going to keep them, and you can actually keep them on the guitar. You might want to put a little piece of masking tape around them. Because these things get jostled around, you know what I'm saying? This way, they sort of keep straight. They don't get fucked up. And, you know, we can do this thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to go one by one with these uh, saddles here. And that way we're going to, you know, not have to do too much work on the actual intonation. Because, you know what I mean, they'll be pretty much in the same place. But we'll get the old yard stick out. And give it a quick measure. So let's get those guys on right now. I'll put you on pause. All right. So we got the brass ones on right off the bat, man. You can feel. You know what I mean? These are such cheap pop metal garbage. You know what I mean? These you can see in the grooves are a little bit deeper. 
and it's just a little bit, you know what I mean, more solid, and that's something that's going to aid Johnny Rock, because he's, you know what I mean, he's a step above us, you know what I mean, let's admit it, he's, he's a great guitarist, so he needs a great guitar, so let's clean this fucker up, um, I always tout this, this thing's been in my shop, I don't know, how long is this, 2014, so this has been sitting around my shop now for five years, six years, something like that, man. And it's what I use, man. Just clean the shit out of the guitar real quick. So let's do that, and I'll come right back at you. Just basically take a rag, a half-ass rag, you know what I mean? And uh, spray it into the rag and just clean it up. Right? Don't need no science on that one. I'll see you in a switch. So now we see that. We worked that chrome back. You know what I mean? We got it clean. So let's get some... Let's get some Cornabel wax on and some cleaner wax. Got the old toilet mint wax, a little bit of mothers. This stuff, this stuff definitely is definitely the best. So we're just going to apply it with that same half-ass rag that we used with the old Dollar Tree Classic. So we're just going to, you know what I mean, rub it in here, rub it on circles. So I'm going to apply that right quick and come back at you. And now we have it dried to a hazy shade of winter, right? Now we're going to take that same half-ass rag and we're just going to go ahead and wipe that shit off. You know what I mean? We're going to do this on both sides and then we're going to get like a sheepskin like rag. Hang on. One of these guys right here, you know what I mean? And just buff it out with that. So I'll come right back at you. Alright. <laughs> gleaming. Gleaming. We want to do everything. You want to do every single thing. You want to do the pick guard. You want to do this. You want to do everything. Get everything coated with that wax, man. Look at that, gorgeous. And of course, you know what I mean? Again, you put that little piece of tape there because you're manhandling this. You don't want those strings to get all fucked up. So that's done. You know what I mean? This is beautiful, gorgeous. Look at that shine, man. A little bit of moss, man. Make sure it's Brazilian, man. Brazilian or, or you know what I mean? Brazilian. Ain't no other ones. So now we got this guy, man. What are we going to do on him? We're going to keep everything away from the headstock. And you know what I mean? We're not going to try to screw around with that. We do want to get something on there. It's, it's on butcher's wax, man. Put some butcher's wax. Fretboard, come right back at you. This is just something we're gonna take that same half-ass cloth, rub it in there, right? Just just on the, the fretboard, around the back here, a little tiny bit, and just get a little bit of smoothness going and get those frets coated again. You know what I mean? Because we cleaned it and we screwed around with it a little bit. So I'm coming right back at you. All right, we're done, man. We're done with that the butcher's wax. Little dab will do you, man. There's some wear in there. Hey, look, this is a maple board. This is Johnny Rock's guitar. He's played it. You know what I'm saying? There's obviously some kind of fucked up wear on it. It's a maple board. Get over it, folks. So, you don't want to put too much bolster wax on there, and then it's not going to play right. So, we got those round-headed knobs on. Look how much better that looks, man. That looks gorgeous. Let's put this guitar together, man. Let's put this guitar together. I'm just going to come back at you with the glam shot because we don't got really much to to we got the neck plate to put on that's it action intonation yeah i mean you can look on the internet how to do the action intonation let's check out these glam shots wow man wow oh wow it's so solid it plays like a four thousand dollar guitar man <laughs> i put a little round string tree on there a little clue sound style Compliment those big John Lennon Ace of Spaders. You know, a little piece of the 50s. You know what I'm saying? The 50s had those round string trees. So, you know, we're going a little bit of brass. We're going a little bit of butterscotch. We're doing the 50s thing. I mean, Dougie's still intact. We love you, brother. It's kind of like a piece of friendship here. All three of us sort of together again, man. Johnny Rocks Marks. You know, this is still your guitar, brother. You know what I mean? It's just 2.0. You know what I'm saying? I, was, I just fixed it up a little bit. You know? So, I can sit here and fucking talk all day long about how, you know, wonderful I think I did a good job and how I want to pat myself on the back and I wish I had a million dollars and you know what I mean? I think that in a past life that I was Einstein's grandfather. Who knows? But the real, you know what I mean? The real moment of truth is when I hand this back to the owner. And he either says, what the fuck did you do to my guitar? Or he says, oh my God, Bobby. You know what I mean? You got done yourself once again. So let's see exactly what his reaction is. Because you never know with the rock. He is the king. We're here with my man Rock in the studio in Asbury. 
he just unwrapped his early Christmas present. <laughs> Bless you, Godspeed, everybody. 